Are uh, we? Let's try Underworld Unleashed today. This was the 1996 fall crossover for DC. I think this might even be the first fall crossover that they tried. I can't remember if there was one in 1995. These were what the crossovers from annuals shifted to. These replaced them. And I kind of respect these. They were trying less to be a big Christmas on Infinite Earths style event. And rather felt like the big end of year show. This one has some charm. Nice simple plot. At the top it says... The absolute evil is here. They are not talking about the writer Martin Quaid. They are talking about the new bad guy. A lot of the time when I am reviewing things, I opt to not bother with certain nitpicks or minor critiques because it feels a bit pedantic. But to compensate for all the complaints you have missed over the years by me deciding to ignore them, there is what I would consider a bad art mistake on this page. We have the Flasks Rogues Gallery, who are famously called Flask Force X. And you have six panels here. And you would think that means that there's six of them. That is what the layout is implying. But that is incorrect. The first two panels are both Boomerang. And I consider that to be a big art flub. See, they're not exciting. The sort of criticisms I leave out of videos. They're not exciting, are they? The five members of Flask Force X... I've all had their powers enhanced. They have had power-ups. And now they are a Flask Force X to be reckoned with. They cause some real chaos and destruction. Global catastrophes. And this is all in the name of their new benefactor... Necron. Necron is a new character. He has been introduced here. And he goes on to actually have a fair amount of subsequent use by other writers. He was the main bad guy in a Dead Boy miniseries. Not on any of the covers to prove that point. He is in Van Morrison's Justice League run. He is a bad guy in this. And taking a look, he is in even more than I was aware of when I said that he had a fair amount of future roles. Obviously, you shouldn't judge a character only based on how many appearances they have. But sometimes with bad guys. With bad guys introduced after a certain point. It is a good indicator that there is maybe some there. Writers tend to always go back to the classics. When there is a new baddie introduced like this. And they end up with quite a lot of appearances. It is a mark that they are better than Blowtorch Brand or Knife Hand or whatever that shit Blood Ties character was called. Necron is very analogous to the Marvel Satan character, Spider-Man's best friend. The Flask enemies... They sold their souls to Necron 
in exchange for the power rope. And now Necron claims what is his and Flask Force X basically die. It is a very bold way to start a crossover. It's also a very cheap and shit way. The death of five decently well-known villains to set up the new big bad. But I think it was always the intention to bring them back eventually. They do stay dead for another year or two with Martin Quaid picking up on the plot line in some issues of the flask before their proper return in New Year's Evil. I think I have all of those comics so I might look at them if they are of interest to anyone. I know Electric Superman is in the flask issues. And they have really, really great Ryan Paul art. I wasn't sure if I would have enough to say about this, but there's quite a lot of talk about in this one. We have the Justice League, and they are responding to all the disasters that Flask Force X had generated. This is that iffy Justice League team from before the Van Morrison relaunch. We have enough of some characters here, like the Flask or Wonder Woman or the Vision, who are doing a lot of heavy lifting for making the team seem legit. And even Smurf Devil, I will say he works more on the team than the stupid French woman or two members of another team. Smurf Devil is a major character in this story. I am not appreciative of what is done with him. It doesn't seem in character. But at least Smurf Devil is getting a big role in a crossover, I guess. I should also note, this could possibly be one of those comics that Martin Quaid is credited as the sole writer for but it was more the work of the editor August General in Iron. He is suspiciously only credited with story and not as a scripter or a writer. Another central character in this is one of the members of Flask Force X, one who was not part of that stuff at the start, Tricker, he needs a bloody haircut, so maybe that is the improvement Necron would offer him in exchange for his soul. I will skip over some of this. We see... A typical Faustian deal play out here with a guy who gans on a shooting spree at a prison. The main thing is that it allows all the super criminals a chance to break out and escape. And this is what Necron wanted all along he wanted new pawns he wanted some new playthings tricker is trying to uncover and learn more about the death of his friends and he winds up among all these villains who have been assembled by Necron. There is quite a lot of them. And here is our first full look at Necron. But you already saw them in the cutaways I used. So it's not that important now. He makes the same pitch to all these bad guys that he made to Flask Force X. He will increase their power. 
in exchange for their souls. The characters on the cover to this issue all accept this deal. Alakazam, Lenny Lufa, Circa, Magneto and Joker from the film Joker. And after this we have a double splash page of tons of bad guys. And understandably, Sexy Ivy is the one closest to the front. Some of these agreed to Necron's deal, some didn't. These villains are set up for tie-in issues. They are not core to the main story. Some of them reject them anyway. Like, I am going to say, Sexy Ivy does, because he clearly couldn't improve on that. And we have the almost cliche scene here, as Mongoloid refuses to acknowledge Necron as his superior, so he gets a massive beatdown, and then Necron kills him and takes his soul anyway. Thumbs down for that. Pointless death. Flask Force X already filled that remit and quarter. Trickster is observing all of this and he waits on deciding if he will sell his soul. He won't. But his part is as a viewer and then stepping up to involve himself in the affair in the final part. Pretty pointless double page splash here. And our final plot point is Necron summons Smurf Devil to offer him one of his devilish deals. Really, it's not bad. Like most DC crossovers, the ending of the entire thing is unsatisfying. But I think there's some worth here. This is some of Martin Quaid's most milk toast writing. And as such, it's also some of his best. If it is actually him. I have already done the 666 thumbs up gag somewhere. So it's just a usual seven thumbs up here.